it's been almost four weeks since the tragic events of March 11th that everybody knows about. And clearly, it's going to take years until we get a full scope of the human and economic costs of that event. But I think we're now at the point where we can start to see some of the um, some preliminary trends, and we can draw some preliminary conclusions from what's actually happened on March the 11th. First of all, despite the terrible loss of life and the damage that occurred in Tohoku, um, life in Japan goes on. I mean, you all live here, you know that. But if you are getting your information from the BBC, uh, getting your information from international news services, you could be forgiven for thinking that Japan was a smoldering crater. Uh, and, and clearly, that's, that's clearly not the case. I, I, actually, th there are, there are uh, uh, no shortage of candidates for that. Um, things are clearly not as bad as they look on the international media. So as a result, if you're looking for bargains, you're probably going to be disappointed. The vast majority of Tokyo residents are staying put, and they're getting on with their lives. That said, um, there is possibly some bargains to be found in the, the high-end expat market. Um, and that's because... That market was already hammered by uh, the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008. A lot of expats left then. And every time the expats leave, it seems fewer of them come back. Um, in the two weeks after March the 11th, they estimate about a quarter of a million expats left Japan. Now, obviously, that's not all individuals. There's, there's wives and, and, and trailing husbands and families and so on. But a quarter million people is a lot to lose. Depending on how many actually come back, there may be a glut of Western-style apartments in the end. Um, and those apartments are typically not really of interest to local buyers, unlike in Hong Kong, where I live, where the apartment across the hall from me has been inhabited by Chinese people, by Americans, by American Chinese. In, in Japan, you tend to have a fairly distinct uh, differentiation between the local and, and the expat market. Even if you're just renting a place, and it's an expat style place, this could be a good time to enter into a conversation with your landlord about maybe, maybe getting a discount. Um, I hope none of you are landlords and are taking that the wrong way. <laughs> the departure of the so-called fly gene um, is also potentially going to make it harder for expats to get mortgages here. Um, if you go back 10, 15 years, one of the standard arguments that the Japanese banks had for not lending to foreigners was, oh, you're all going to run away. Um, and if it turns out that uh, after, in the, in the, the follow-up to, to March the 11th, a lot of expats have been seen to be running away from their jobs, from their debts, from their obligations. Those who stay behind may get tarred by that brush. Um, one HR specialist that I spoke to told me that this particular week is when a lot of the expats who just sort of took off have got to be back. And if they're not back this week, they may very well end up losing their jobs. While most of the death and, and damage was in Tohoku, the, the Kanto region also got hammered, as, as you well know. Um, fortunately, Japan's tough building standards really stood the country in good stead. It, I was astonished. I got the, the, uh, the numbers today. Only seven people died in the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, 17 people seriously injured. Three buildings collapsed, and three buildings were severely damaged. There was lots of other buildings that were damaged. But when you look at the size of this market, that's a very, very small amount of damage and death when you consider that you know, the, the maximum earthquake here was a high five on the Japanese scale of seven. So that, that, that actually is, is, is quite a good score. There are probably a bunch of people who live in high-rise buildings who are, after the swaying back and forth that's been going on for the last four weeks, maybe thinking about that, and also you know, nursing sore knees after having walked up and down a lot of flights of stairs after the ele uh, elevator services were canceled. But as a whole, the infrastructure held up really well. One thing, though, that we are going to see going forward is electricity. It's going to become a much bigger issue. TEPCO lost over a quarter of its generating capacity immediately after March the 11th. And as you probably know, because of different line frequencies between eastern and western Japan, there are technical barriers that prevent electricity from being pumped in from other parts of the country. That means that as we get into the summer months, when electricity demand is at its absolute peak, we're likely to see brownouts, blackouts. Um, those power shortages are also likely to disrupt international production, products that have got a long production or global production chain. So. If you're thinking about buying something like home appliances, computers, audiovisual equipment, this would be a great time to do it. One, because you're helping the Japanese recovery by buying things and keeping business people in, 
operating, but also because you'll probably get the product that you want. And there are already pinch points, resin manufacturers, specialty product manufacturers. Toyota, for example, I'm told today is shutting down uh, their American production because those supply chains have been compromised. From a practical perspective, um, people who can walk or bicycle to work, or better yet, who can actually telecommute, are going to have an advantage, particularly if train service gets compromised because of, of those rolling blackouts. Energy efficient homes and homes with natural ventilation are going to be a whole lot more comfortable than sealed buildings, particularly if the power goes out for an extended period of time. And some neighborhoods are going to get hit much harder than others. Um, for example, if you live next to a police station uh, or other piece of essential infrastructure, the odds are much better that you're going to have uninterrupted electricity than if you're just a small, low-end residential neighborhood. The big question is going to be, how long is it going to be before more generating capacity comes online? Um, it's, it's no secret that it takes years to build a thermal or a hydroelectric plant. Nuclear plants take longer still, and that is, of course, assuming that the Japanese electorate is going to allow more of them to be built. They may not really have a choice, but I think it's going to be something that's going to be hotly debated as time goes on. The longer the power problems pr go on, um, the more inclined people are going to be to move to the center of Tokyo where they can get to work more easily and also to, to get out of Tokyo altogether. Speaking of which, um, a as you know, a lot of people fled uh, as Fukushima got worse. A lot of people moved to their businesses to, Tokyo, to Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. And that might pose you or make you wonder at this point whether it would make sense to either buy down there or to look at investing down there. My opinion is that the answer is, is maybe. Kensai could, in fact, <laughs> I'm hedging, sorry about that. Kensai could, in fact, benefit from, um, from businesses moving their staff and their operations down there. But Tokyo is the economic, the political, the academic center of Japan. It has been for a while, and it's going to take a lot to move people away from that. And you're not likely to gain much in the way of personal safety. Uh, if you cast your mind back 16 years, Kobe, the, Kobe, the great uh, uh, Henshin earthquake, killed 6,500 people. And there are six nuclear plants within spitting distance of the, of the Kansai area, including the troubled Manju uh, fast breeder reactor at Suruga, which is, has been uh, the scene of a number of problems. March 11th was also um, bad news for the tourists and the recreational property here. Uh, arrival of foreign tourists, the last number I saw for the remainder of March, the arrivals were off 75% as carriers like American Airlines, Delta, and Cathay cut back flights. So you get a sort of a self-reinforcing cycle there. There's also been reports of, of developers in Nisico selling properties at a, at a discount, trying to, trying to move them. Speaking of Nisico, um, you may not be aware of this, but Nisico is less than 25 miles from Hokkaido's only nuclear power facility, Tomari. Um, and over the past decade, Tamari has had a number of incidents. Um, they've all been relatively minor compared to Fukushima. But if you're sitting in Hong Kong looking to, uh, at where to spend your recreational dollar, that, that might in fact be a consideration. Obviously, the radiation leaks are, are not doing anything to help Japan's exports of seafood or farm produce for that matter. As of today, more than 25 jurisdictions, including the US, China, Hong Kong, and Singapore have suspended food imports from Japan, either from parts of Japan or in some cases from the entire country, which is obviously a, a, quite an overreaction. That obviously is hurting Japanese farmers. Um, as a group, Japanese farmers are old. Um, a lot of them are economically not very viable without price support. And I, it's, it's a safe bet that the, what's been going on is going to hurt them and is probably going to push some of them out of business. In addition to adding to the misery of what happened on March the 11th, that's going to probably hasten the rationalization of Japan's agricultural sector and make more farmland available for other purposes. Which brings us to another question. Who is going to pay for all of this? Um, one possibility has been an increase in the consumption tax from 5% to 7%. That's already been suggested. And you might want to factor that in if you're thinking of buying. Um, as you probably are aware, real estate-related services like agents' commission um, and also things like building materials, construction services, and the price of a used building is subject to consumption tax. Um, the radiation leaks and tsunami and also the earthquake have also had a long-term impact on Japan overall. But one thing it's not going to change is the demographic trends. Japan's population is still shrinking, as we see from the initial numbers that have come out from the October 2010 census. 
uh, Japan's population is also continuing to age. The number of one-person households continues to rise, and that's creating more and more demand for, for small apartments. And you're still seeing more of internal migration to Tokyo and other large cities. And, and obviously, if the Japanese government decides not to rebuild the areas that were hit by the tsunami, that's just going to add to that process. Which brings me to a question I think a lot of people are asking, does it make sense to buy now? As I've said before, uh, and I'll say again, I think the answer is still yes. If you plan on staying in Japan for the long term, if you do your research and if you go in with your eyes open, um, whether it's rebounding from things like the Great Kanto Quake of 1923, rebuilding after the Second World War, adjusting to things like oil shocks and endaka, Japan as a country and the Japanese people have demonstrated time and time again a remarkable ability to recover from adversity. And I have no reason to believe that 2011 is going to be any different. Thank you.